Cardiovascular disease happens for a number of reasons. Damage to the blood vessel wall, plaque buildup, clots sticking in the opening, not allowing blood flow through, plenty of other examples. One of the factors that seems to contribute is now getting more attention is the enzyme MPO, myeloperoxidase. In fact, it was first identified almost three decades ago as being a cardiovascular risk, but now it's resurging due to a study recently released that delves deep into how MPO is manipulated and how it impacts our arteries. The question is, what is it doing? And if it's bad, how can we shut it down? Well, in short, MPO attacks and stiffens our arteries. In fact, when we look at the relationship between blood MPO levels and reduced flow-mediated dilation, so that's a metric of blood vessel function and the ability for the blood vessel to open and close normally, we can see an inverse relationship. The horizontal axis is greater MPO in the blood. The vertical is the flow median dilation. The higher, the better for your blood vessel function. Clearly following the red line, as MPO increases, FMD is reduced. To be clear, this isn't a strong association, but it is there. And we do know that MPO is only one of many factors that contribute to reduced FMD function. And since this is a simple association, the researchers did further experiments to point the finger more directly at MPO causing problems in blood vessel relaxation, increasing blood vessel stiffness. Okay, but exactly how is MPO causing these diminishments in blood vessel function? increased blood vessel stiffness. Well, it has a lot to do with cells that secrete MPO. When looking at a specific region of the blood vessel, there's a unique interaction between three groups of cells. To clarify, if we were to zoom into your blood vessel, there's an initial lining of cells called endothelial cells. <laughs> if you've been watching physionic content at all, you know that these cells release different molecules that open and tighten the blood vessel, regulating blood pressure and blood vessel health. Under that layer are structural proteins, and below that are smooth muscle cells, the cells that actually enact the tightening and opening of the arteries. Then, although we rarely discuss it, there are fat cells that surround these vascular smooth muscle cells. And between the fat cells are also immune cells. It's these cells, the immune cells, that secrete MPO, and they actually invade into the fat tissue far more. But why? Are they just having a hissy fit because you took away their game console? I mean, I'd be upset too, but enough to start hurting your neighbors? Unlikely. So, what else could it be? Well, the fat cells draw them in by releasing molecules called chemokines. These chemokines attract immune cells, and then the immune cells worsen the arterial environment by releasing MPO. Think of it like a sibling shooting a rubber band behind a parent's back at their brother, the immune cell. And the immune cell, the brother, getting back because it starts releasing MPO, or I don't know, throwing a stone at their sibling in retaliation. The start is at the fat cell, even if the immune cells get caught and make it worse. And by making it worse, there is evidence that the immune cells through MPO reprogram the fat cells to release less of the beneficial hormones like adiponectin. So to sum, something that you do, which we'll get to, increases the invasion of immune cells into the fat tissue around your blood vessels. The fat cells communicate through molecules with your immune cells and recruit them to the area. These immune cells then release MPO, which increases the inflammatory signals from the fat cells by, for example, reducing the release of a highly beneficial hormone called adiponectin. This reduced release of adiponectin, along with other molecular changes, stiffens the arteries. Okay, now, how can we de-influence our fat cells around our blood vessels to allow this immune invasion? And how can we stifle this MPO release? Well, before that, if you'd be interested in understanding more on MPO's effects on your blood vessels, like the direct effects or the relationship to the fat cells, and something that I actually haven't discussed before, nitrotyrosine, along with some more direct nutritional supplemental means of reducing MPO, you may actually already be using some of these, in fact, then check out the Physionic Insiders. That's where you'll have access to the full, nerdier version of this video that you're watching, plus an accompanying article and resources. Why? Like these. Check it out. The link to join the Insiders is in the description. I'll see you over there.
assuming that you despise the idea of joining the insiders right now because you want to know how to reduce MPO as is, then buckle in. The main study that we've been going over is not solely in animals, as researchers did relate some of this to humans as well, and we know humans express MPO. However, it's also shown that people who undergo bariatric surgery, as seen here, the red box is those before surgery and the blue is after, experience drops in MPO levels. The higher the box, the worse. So the takeaway is simply cut out your stomach. I'm kidding, relax. I mean, technically that is a true interpretation, but the greater applicability is that weight loss correlates with lower MPO levels. And if we open the same data again, notice the green box, that's lean individuals. Notice how they have even lower MPO levels Hint, hint. So, yes, your weight. And I would take an educated guess that it's actually your fat mass, especially visceral fat, is a major determinant of MPO levels. Because remember, this all starts at the fat, the sister that shoots the rubber band at the brother, the immune cells. If you can reduce the siren's call of the fat to the immune cell, you've already reduced your risk significantly. But in addition, that means reduced inflammation that might otherwise activate these MPO-producing immune cells. And speaking to that, anti-inflammatory diets, like those rich in antioxidants, reduced processed foods, and the like, have tremendous impact on all the above. And a simple experiment that you could do, if you were inclined, would be to get your MPO tested. It's available at most publicly available blood testing facilities. Change your diet for three months, especially if you lose body fat and visceral fat, and then retest. You'd likely see a protective decline. All right, I realize that might have been a lot to digest. Ultimately, here are a few key takeaway points. One, the mechanistic. MPO, or myeloperoxidase, is secreted by immune cells once recruited to the inflammatory fat tissue surrounding our blood vessels, which ultimately leads to even more inflammation and a stiffening of the blood vessels. Not good. Two, the test. There are simple MPO tests that are available if you wanted to get yours checked. This is definitely not necessary, but if you're curious about an inflammatory test closer to where the diseases actually lie, the arteries, there you go. Three, the fixes. One, clearly fat and especially visceral fat loss. This is critical. The less inflammatory tissue, i.e. visceral fat, the less MPO, likely. Consuming an anti-inflammatory diet that's rich in antioxidants and keeps your weight in check, all important for keeping MPO levels low, as we saw that leaner individuals naturally just have lower MPO. But speaking to visceral fat and inflammation, I cover much more on the topic right here. Thanks for hanging out. See ya.